Okay then, so now we're in a position where we can start playing with a few different Flutter widgets and using them within our application. To begin with, I want to quickly talk about one of the most basic layout widgets available to us, which is the container widget. Now, containers act as wrappers to other content or to other widgets, I should say. For example, we might have this text widget, which we can wrap with a container widget. But why would we do that? Well, when we use a container, we can apply margin and padding to that container very easily, which then gives the child text widget in this case some more space around it. We can also apply a color to the container if we wanted to. Now, by default, a container's width and height matches whatever its child's width and height is. But we can also override this and specify a different width and height for the container if we want to. And when the container doesn't have a child, it takes up all of the available space around it by default. So these containers are quite flexible. Anyway, that's a container in a nutshell. Now let's try using one in our code. So I'm going to come over here and remove this text widget. And instead, we'll have a container widget. Now, at the minute, this const gets an error. So let's remove that. It shouldn't be there. And now inside the container widget, we have a child argument. Now, the child argument would be whatever widget this container wraps. So that could be a text widget, for example. Now, to begin with, I don't want to add a child widget because I want to show you that by default, the container takes up the full space available to it on the screen. So all I'll do is give this a color instead. We'll say color. And then we'll use the colors class right here to use material design color, which is going to be orange and then a comma. Remember, after every property or argument, we have a comma. Save that and we can see this big container, all colored orange, taking up all the available room. Now, if we add a child property, so I can say child is a text widget that says, hello, ninjas, like so. And we get this blue squiggly line, so we know we can add a const right here to optimize this. I'm going to save it, and notice now it no longer takes up the available space to it. It just takes up the space required by the child widget. So the same size as this, right? Now, if we want to override the width and height of the container, we can do using width and height properties. But just one quick thing, if I come under the child, and add a property like width, for example, notice this blue line right here. And it says that the child argument should be last in the widget constructor. So again, this is just basically not an error. It's not going to not work, but it wants you to put the child at the bottom all the time. It should be the last argument. So I'm going to remove that and then come up here, put the width here instead. So we'll set the width to be, I don't know, 200, for example, pixels. And then also we can set a height, which is going to be 100. If I save that now, notice we get this container, which is 200 wide and 100 high. So that's how we override the width and height. Now, I'm not actually going to do that. I want it to be the same size as the text. So let's comment those out. And now it goes back to this. We can also add padding and margin. To do that, we can say padding as an argument name. And then this is going to be edge insets dot and we use a method on this called all so this is how we provide padding and margins by using this edge insets thing and then one of several different methods on that so when i use the all method it means apply padding to all of the sides equally so i just pass one value in here and then it applies padding to the top right bottom and left together 20 pixels now this is giving us a blue squiggly line. So just apply const in front of that. All right. So now if I save this, we should see 20 pixels of padding all around the text. Awesome. We can also give this margin. So I'll say margin is going to be const. And then again, edge insets. This time we'll use a different method. So we'll try this one right here. But before we do that, if you want to apply padding or margin to only one side, you can use the only method and then a named argument. So if we take a look at this, only accepts these different arguments, left, top, right, and bottom. So if we only want to apply margin to the left, we'd say left here. And then that would be, I don't know, 50. And then comma right at the end, save this. And we can see 50 pixels of margin on the left, but nowhere else. We're not going to use that. What I'm going to use, uh, do is use this from LTRB. So this stands for left, top, right, bottom. So they're just positional arguments this time. We don't have to name them. So I'm going to say 10 pixels on the left, 
40 pixels at the top to the right, zero, and then bottom is going to be zero, like so. Save that, and now we can see at the top we have 40 pixels, to the left we have 10 pixels, and no margin elsewhere. Awesome. All right, so there's one more thing I'd like to show you in this lesson, and that's how we apply textiles to text that we display on the screen. So for example, we might want to color it differently. We might want to give it a different font size, different font weight, etc. And we can do that by using the style argument right here. And the value of that, if we hover over this, you're going to see is text style. So a lot of the time, you might not remember what the value of an argument should be. Just always hover over that argument to find out the value. So I know this is text style, like so. And if we hover over text style, we're going to see that we can pass in a bunch of different arguments to stylize the text, like color, background color, font size, font weight, font style, letter spacing, etc. All these different things. So I'm going to enter down and we're going to just use a few of these different things. So then the first one is going to be the font size. So we'll say font size like so. And if we hover over this, then we're going to see that this should be a double. So I could just pass in 18 like so. All right, so letter spacing, again, it's just going to be a number, and I can say four for that. We'll say decoration, which is the text decoration. And if we hover over this, you're going to see the type of this is text decoration. Okay, so we know to say text decoration right here. And you can see we have these different properties on the text decoration, which we can use. So let me finish typing this out text decoration and then dots. And then I'm going to go with underline like so. After that, we're going to say font style. And the font style, if we hover over this, we can see the type is font style. So font style. And then press dots. And we can see italic there. So we're going to use italic. And this is the way we work with Flutter applications to provide values. Like we wouldn't just say here, for example, a string and then italic. Instead, we use different enums and classes and things like that and use properties and methods on those like this or like this to provide values. OK, and just remember, if you're ever unsure of what a value should be, you can always hover over the argument name and look at what the property value should be. All right. So let me save this now. Hopefully we'll see that update over here, which we do. It now has some space between the letters. That's the letter spacing, bigger font size. It's underline and italic. Awesome.